Hello, welcome to Escape the Box Piano, it's Dan here. One of the questions that keeps cropping up on this channel is how do I make my MIDI files? So I thought that I would make a video and show you exactly that. My uh, workflow is quite bespoke, but hopefully what, the way that I'm gonna show you how to create a MIDI file in this tutorial will be generic enough so that you can take the principles and if you have the right hardware and you can locate the right software, then you can do this yourself. At a most basic level, the bits of hardware that you're going to need are a MIDI equipped keyboard, such as this one, uh, a computer and a lead to connect the two of them. So we make the assumption now that you've got a keyboard and you have a computer. Let's take a look at the keyboard first. Take a look at the back panel of your piano keyboard and you're going to find a section where there are some inputs and outputs. There's uh, going to be an input where you plug in the power. There may be outputs for audio. If your keyboard doesn't have speakers built into it, uh, you're going to need to get the sound from somewhere else. Even if it does have speakers built in, you may still have audio outputs. The output that you're looking for is a MIDI output, and that is not the same as audio. Audio is exactly that, it's sound, whereas MIDI is computer data about the sound, but not the sound itself. On this keyboard, the MIDI output is uh, one of the old style squarish USB connectors. Uh, on your keyboard, it, it could be anything from a standard USB, perhaps through to a five pinned in plug. Now, if you don't have a MIDI output on your keyboard, all is not lost, there are audio to MIDI converter devices that you can buy. So another little bit of hardware that sits in between the keyboard and your computer. And you can go online and look for these things. At this point though, you should consider is that the best approach? An audio to MIDI converter can be quite fun and interesting if you are trying to convert to MIDI an acoustic instrument, for example, such as a violin or a flute or a cello. So you can only have an audio recording of that. Where we are working here with piano keyboards, uh, they start off in the digital domain in the first place. The very action of pressing down one of these keys is creating a piece of data inside the keyboard itself. The best thing that you can do, the best quality MIDI that you could possibly obtain, therefore, is to keep that data in the digital domain. So step one is complete. You have found your MIDI output, you've connected that, you've plugged one end of the lead into your keyboard, the other end into your computer. Step two then, is to make sure that you've got drivers installed for the um, specific make and model of your keyboard. Because although you've now got uh, a connection from the keyboard where it's sending data to the computer, the computer has to understand what on earth that data is in the first place, and that's why you need a driver. Best thing to do is go online, type in the make and model of your stage piano, your piano keyboard, followed by the word uh, MIDI driver, and then perhaps also your operating system. Download and install the MIDI drivers. Step three then, is that you are going to need an application where you can record yourself playing your piano keyboard and record that data that's going into the computer. There are loads of programs available for free and paid. For example, on the Mac, we have GarageBand. My program of choice happens to be a digital audio workstation by a company called Presonus, and it's called Studio One. It's currently in its fourth generation. The version that I use is a free version, Studio One version four, Prime, and you can download that from their website. I really like it, it does everything that I need, it allows me to record my piano, it records the MIDI data, and it allows me, importantly, to save that as a MIDI file. So, step one, step, step two, step three, all complete. Step four, then, is to record a song. So, here we go. Know that one of the uh, things that you're probably going to need to do before you even get to start recording is configure the pro the application that you've chosen. 
to recognize your MIDI instrument and that's probably nested away somewhere in a settings or configuration panel. Um, in Personas for example it's in external devices here. You can see I've already got my uh, CP33 uh, stage piano set up so that's all good. Uh, then you will need to add a track on which you're going to record. So we can do that over here, add tracks, and we're gonna just, I'm just gonna call this track. Uh, this is gonna be an instrument, and the input is going to be my stage piano. And we can okay on that. Now, if I press a note on the piano, you can see it's being recognized on the track over here with the orange kind of metering. So we're ready to record. I'm going to record a quick piece. I'm gonna set a metronome clicking to it uh, and play uh, metronomically. So here we go. And there we have it, we've made a recording down to the application. Now we can replay that to hear what it sounds like. Sounds in Personas aren't the best, typically I'd choose a different application, but uh, just for, for brevity, let's get something here. So I'm gonna drag the grand piano sound on. So the sound that you heard when I was recording was the actual Yamaha piano itself. This is a replay sound, so this is within uh, Personas. Here we go. Okay, so there we go, so that's the replay. If I double click on the track here, I can see the individual MIDI note data. And then finally, I can choose to save this down to the desktop. So save as, and then we can choose what we're gonna save it as, MIDI file here. Save, MIDI file test. Use MIDI file format. Okay, put that to the background and go into the test folder that I created, and there we go, there is the MIDI file. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, do keep an eye out. I'm gonna do some follow-up videos on further things, manipulation, and uh, uses for MIDI files, so keep an eye on the channel for that, and I look forward to seeing you soon.